Welcome to this special edition of Week in Review. Thank you, and I mean it, for the privilege of help mentor and guide and direct you so you know the truth. And you're about to see a clip from a movie that premiered in Paris, France on the very controversial subject of climate change, global warming. You and I know we are to be good stewards of this earth, but there is so much deception. So this video by my friend Chris Rogers will help you watch it and share it. And please, let's get busy in prayer, engaging, and voting what? From a biblical worldview, as this election is right at hand. Watch. A pollutant is something that causes harm. Carbon dioxide is a trace gas in the atmosphere and it's the elixir of life. It is the basis for nearly all the planetary food chains. CO2 is a known absorber of infrared radiation and therefore in the atmosphere it acts as what we call a greenhouse gas. The idea that there might be some climate effect from CO2 is very natural. The question is, can you measure? Is it large enough to be measurable? From what we know now, the answer is, it's hardly measurable. Carbon dioxide warms the surface temperature up a little bit, and it makes plants grow a lot better. I would say that's a benefit, not a pollutant. We all learned in the third grade that CO2 is what plants eat. It's helping plant growth do better. It's making mankind's own crops more productive. True environmentalists have been so totally grossly misled on this subject, it's a real travesty. They've been misled to the point that they think CO2 is a pollutant. It clearly is not. Probably the thing that motivates me most uh, in my involvement with this question of climate change is just the fact that it touches on those things that are most important. It touches on the question of who we are, what's our place in the scheme of things. As a Christian, thought environmental stewardship, yeah, absolutely, God has called us to be good stewards of the environment. So much environmentalist thinking has human beings as non-natural. It's kind of odd that you can have a Darwinian point of view, and we evolved, and yet at the same time, talk about human beings as a cancer on the earth. But I was surprised once I got into it just how much ideology, including bad ideology, actually works its way into even the description of the scientific evidence. So what bothers me is that there's a lot of people that won't allow humans to have the same rights the trees have. Stewardship and dominion begins with caring uh, for our brother and sister human beings. In order to know how to actually help the poor, we have to know the reality of the situation. We have to know how human beings are impacting the climate, if they are, and then especially, what would be the effects of particular policies? We have a group of ex-NASA scientists and some astronauts that have come together to form a team to study this CO2 science, Earth's temperature history, and come up with some kind of recommendation at the end uh, for what they think is really taking place. 
What they've come up with are nine conclusions, and it is the science is not settled, natural processes dominate climate change, man-made CO2 appears to be muted or very little, real empirical evidence does not support catastrophic warming, the catastrophic forecasts are all coming from unvalidated climate models. Unvalidated models do not produce scientific data. The climate models contain assumptions of Earth's sensitivity to CO2 that are far too high. There is not a single example of carbon dioxide being a pollutant, not one. And lastly, Using 165 years of real observations since the Industrial Revolution of Earth's temperature and CO2, they find out that the maximum rise that we should expect from this additional CO2 before we run out of hydrocarbon fuels to put more in the atmosphere is only about 1.2 degrees Celsius, or certainly nothing to be afraid of. What a scientist does is tell the truth as best he can. The truth to be right. This is an exceptionally complex field. Okay, many scientists just simply don't know. If you ask them, what's it gonna be like in 20 years? They say, ask me in 20 years. The climate change debate has so politicized science. It shouldn't be that way. I mean, global warming is a scientific question. It shouldn't be left or right wing. But it's become part of the laundry list of left wing ideals that people support without even knowing anything about it. We ought to be okay how does CO2 change the weather? What's the real physics of it? How do we have support? This uh, agrees with it. These other things don't agree and have meetings and argue these things out. That hasn't gone on. Science is supposed to be an interaction between ideas and thoughts, one where we're searching for the truth, not where we've predetermined what the truth is and that everybody must conform to it. No one says there's no debate about the periodic table of the elements. Nobody says there's no controversy about gravity because they don't need to say it. It's not contested. The only time people appeal uh, to consensus or insist that there's no legitimate debate to be had is when there is a debate to be had. We've gotten to a situation where we're really describing what we want our results to be. Certain results that fit the theory are in, any dissenting views, any uncertainties are almost whitewashed and removed from the discussion. The fact that people are trying to shut it off means that they don't think they can win the debate. So there's great intimidation on the younger people not to be critics. So I think it's the effort to close down debate and to cover up inconvenient discrepancies between theories and observations. We, we shouldn't be doing that. We believe too much of what we're being told by politicians, uh, newspapers, and things like that. The major driver of climate is the sun. No doubt about it. All the energy that comes to the Earth comes from the sun. There's a little bit of leakage from the core of the Earth in volcanoes and, and other things that add a little bit of heat, but the sun is the major driver. CO2 is a known absorber of infrared radiation, and therefore in the atmosphere it acts as what we call a greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide is a trace gas in the atmosphere and it's the elixir of life. It is the basis for nearly all the planetary food chains. CO2 is a very special chemical that is here to sustain all life. The Earth has experienced large swings in climate in the past. The climate has been much, much more variable than anybody alive today has ever felt. The CO2 has been much higher than it is today. It has varied quite a bit for a number of different reasons. And I think we, we've seen the Earth still be here. All of uh, life on this planet developed by adapting to the climate. CO2 and things that have changed in the past haven't resulted in completely destroying the planet. Why does everybody think carbon dioxide is having such a huge impact on the climate? We've now spent 25 years, several hundred billion dollars, trying to measure 
the impact of human carbon dioxide emissions on planetary temperature. We cannot detect it. The idea that there might be some climate effect from CO2 is very natural. The question is, can you measure? Is it large enough to be measurable? From what we know now, the answer is, it's hardly measurable. And the problem that we have today is that natural variation is being excluded from the scientific narrative, and only CO2 is being listed as the driver. That does not mean it's not there. It means the signal is so small that it's lost in the noise of the natural variation of the data. It's not an issue of whether the climate is changing or not. It's been changing for 3.8 billion years. The question is, what impact do humans have on that change? And it is trivial. Hey friends, if you felt this video was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified once new videos become available. Thanks.